Well hey, good morning and how are you today? An interesting one, I'm not making a wine as I normally do on this channel. I am making something that I normally try to avoid. I'm making vinegar. White wine vinegar made at home. Awesome stuff. Vinegar has so many uses. It's one of the staple things that I keep in my cupboard at all time. And if you don't make your own vinegar, it's going to save you a fortune. There's such a big markup on vinegar. Basically, you can make litres of the stuff for a pound or so. All you need to do is make your own wine and then convert it into vinegar. It's a really, really simple process. I would like to thank English Country Life for the advice, the expert opinion. He's a vinegar maker and small holder and a YouTuber. He has also provided the mother for this vinegar. So go and check him out. The link is down in the pinned comment below and also up above and in the card at the end of the video. Well worth a watch for all your small holding, homesteading, self-sufficient lifestyle, chicken, egg production, you name it. He covers a wide range of self-sufficient topics on his channel. He has also done a great video, very detailed, very thorough about making vinegar. You may remember in a previous video, I did a taste test on my homemade onion wine. Not a brilliant table wine, very oniony, but it is a great cooking wine. And I think the flavour of the onion wine would complement, and I think the flavour of the onion wine and the characters that the wine carries would make an awesome vinegar. I really love messing around with flavours especially vinegars and wines and trying things that haven't been done before or certainly if they have been done they are top secret family recipes passed down through the generations and no one else really knows about them you can make vinegar from pretty much any wine any sherry any beer as long as the alcohol percentage of your drink is over four and a half percent abv and below 8% because that is the range that the acetobacter works best. The higher the ABV of the wine or beer the higher the acid levels are going to be of the vinegar. So for a cooking vinegar I try and get that range to be between 5 and 7% typically. I find that works really well for a cooking vinegar. If I want to sprinkle it on my chips I would go down to 4.5 to 6% ABV. If you want a stronger vinegar, one for cleaning, one for weed killing, then you want to try and increase that ABV up to 15-20%. Any stronger than 20% and, well, you'll be likely to get a wine up to that level. Then we're moving into distilling in a whole different category. My onion wine turned out to be about 14% ABV. So, if you know the ABV of your wine and you want to bring the level down, all you need to do is dilute it with water. So a bottle of 14% wine, add the equal amount of water to bring it down to two bottles of wine at 7% each. But that's how you would work it out. You'll just dilute down to the ABV percentage you're aiming for. Next step for me is to wait for the postman to come because the mother should be in the post today. So I'll be with you in a few minutes time once I've checked the post box. And he bought the mother for me. I've been waiting for this to arrive in the post and so pleased it came today. English Country Life packaged it up for me. He separated it from his main mother. And if you want to see how he did it, it's coming up right now. Hello, Hugh here from English Country Life. James has asked us for some mother of vinegar to start his own vinegar culture. Of course, we're always happy to help out a friend. Let's show you how it's done. So this is a white wine vinegar culture. This one's actually a parsnip wine, but we've done this with lots of country wines, with elderflower, with lilac, and with lots of other lovely fragrant wines that make a brilliant white wine vinegar. The white layer you can see here is what's called mother of vinegar. That's an acetobacteria bound up with cellulose and yeast, and it's floating on the top of the wine, consuming the wine, turning it into vinegar. Down here, 
you can see there are layers of that mother that have fallen away from the bottom and beginning to sink. They're not doing us much good now, but if we split those off, seal one up, send it off to James, he can float that over a cork in some of his own wine and start a new culture. All we have to do is reach in, separate the top layer, which I will keep, from the lower layers. And some of that lower layer we will send off to James. That's fantastic. I really appreciate that. That is awesome. Highly suggest you go and check out their channel and their videos if you want more tips on vinegar making. They are the pros at it. Anyway, my mother. My onion wine and the mother. All I need to do now is combine the two. I don't have anything fancy to use to ferment it in. You want a nice open container where the air and the oxygen can circulate really well. So I am using a five litre water bottle with a top cut off it. That way, lots of the air can circulate in and it can become vinegar. It's an easy makeshift temporary job, but it works wonders. I have two wine bottles of the onion wine that I'm going to use. You can follow the process, follow the method with any wine you have. It does not have to be onion wine. White wine, red wine, rice wine, you name it, same method. So I'm simply going to pour the two bottles into the five litre water bucket. Oh, awesome stuff, brilliant. And now I just want to open up the mother. Fantastic stuff, oh, exciting. And then you want to float the mother on top of the surface of your wine. I'm pinching a tip from English Country Life, I think it's a fantastic idea, of attaching the mother to a cord and then floating that on top. Don't happen to have a spare cord on me, so I'm using a bung from a demijohn. It floats, it'll do the job, good idea. Right then, I am always amazed at the texture of the mother. It feels like a slice of cold ham. So I'm grabbing the cord, and wrapping the mother around. Then simply plop it in to the five litre cut off water bottle and let it float. Good job, right then. Now that is floating on the surface, looking brilliant. And that is it, it is as simple as that. Next step, I'm just going to cover over the five litre water bottle with a nice bit of cheesecloth because you want to let the air circulate in but you do not want that dust and other things land into your your wine or your vinegar this purely prevents any other dust and debris landing into the wine stroke vinegar secure it down rubber band bit of string whatever you have to hand for me just put on my pocket a pair of tights don't ask me why i'm carrying a pair of tights in my pocket but they will do the job of wrapping around and tying the cheesecloth into situ. It's not pretty, but it's effective. It's going to do the job fantastically well. So now I'm going to put this into a lovely warm place. I'm going to put this in a dark, warm, lovely place, somewhere out of the way and forget about it for a month. Don't keep an eye on it, but then check back in a month's time. And then hopefully I can do a taste test of this lovely onion vinegar. It's a first for me. I've never made onion vinegar before. And I can't wait. It's an experiment. I love messing around with flavors in the kitchen and different types of wine, different types of vinegar. I love experimenting. So why don't you subscribe to me? and also to English Country Life 
For more tips about small holding, country life, chickens, eggs, wine making, vinegar making, all these tips you can pick up from English Country Life and myself. And also, why don't you leave us a comment about what you think? See you all soon now. Have fun. Oh yes, by the way, wash your hands after touching the, the mother before you go and mess around with your home brew. You do not want everything turned to vinegar.